All right, I want to have a little talk about continuous integration and how we used to do it in our team and what it really means and why people talk about it. So when you're working on a project and you have, let's say, 10 developers all working on their own features, some of them might be paired together working on the same feature. The idea is you want to get all of those code changes integrated together as fast and often as possible, right? So what do we mean by as often as possible? The goal is like every day you have people merging their features in together. Okay, sometimes you can do it multiple times a day. Sometimes you can do it, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 times a day. It depends on how big your feature is and how often you can make changes. And the benefits of doing this is that if you do the opposite, so let's say you check out a feature branch and you have that branch sitting around for weeks, like let's say two or three weeks before you feel like the feature is fully done. When you try to merge your fully done feature into your, your trunk, let's say it's main or your develop branch, depends on your team, depends on how you do it, you could potentially get a lot of merge conflicts, right? And so if you have three weeks of work just sitting on a branch and another developer has his own three weeks worth of work sitting on a branch and then you try to push them together, there's a much higher chance that you guys are gonna have a lot of conflicts and then you have to coordinate to try to fix those conflicts. And sometimes your features will just kind of negate or kind of break the functionality that the other feature kind of was working towards. Sometimes this doesn't happen. Like if you guys are working in completely separate areas of your application, like if some person's working on this sidebar and another person's working on this top right header for their features, then yeah, there's probably not gonna be any collisions. But if you guys are both messing with the same parts of the application or the same API endpoints or the same data models or database schemas, that's when you can have some dangerous collisions that take extra eyes to kind of fix. So some people argue that the gold standard is to basically have developers integrating their code with each other as often as possible. So, so I'm going to show you the way that we did it on our work project. Um, you can argue that this is not proper. This is proper. Again, the definition is integrate your code changes as often as possible. So I'm going to make a develop branch and I'm going to make a main branch. Okay. And we're not even going to talk about deployments, right? Continuous integration is not really related to continuous deployment, right? It's all about merging your stuff as often as possible. So again, let's say you have 10 developers all working on the same team and they're all working on different features, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say like feature one is over here and feature two is over here. This is, again, this is the way we did it on our work project. So you can kind of argue that we're doing it wrong or we're not following the definition perfectly. Basically, you end up having to check out a branch, right? You have to check out a branch and typically you check out your branch off of some type of trunk. In our case, we all worked off of the develop branch. Anything that we push to main would get deployed. So let's say your product owner says, hey, we need this UI here. For example, let's just look at Excaladrol. You need this UI to basically add another option here that does something. Okay, so your feature two might be related to adding in another option to this side panel. So what you do is we would check out a branch. Say check out branch off of develop. Go ahead and move this over. And then we would start doing work. So I would say, Start, start on feature. So this is where you have to kind of keep in mind that this could easily turn into a long living feature branch if you're not careful. The thing that turns into continuous integration is depending on how small of the sub features you're adding to the feature, right? So again, if the feature was we need to add another option here, well, this can be broken down into multiple tasks. You can have a new, you could add some code to basically have this display another link. You could add code to add another API endpoint to handle whatever logic needs to happen when you click a link. Let's say clicking on this button opens up a modal. You could have another task that's basically work on the modal and get that displayed. So all of these subtasks, as you're working on them, you'd actually basically make pull requests to develop as you're adding in or working on these subtasks. In fact, I'm going to delete the, uh, the other feature thing. I think it's distracting. Okay. So you could potentially make a PR, I'll say to PR for adding link in menu. And then you could do another one, PR for API endpoint. <clears throat> I guess a PR for modal. Now, so the idea is like you work on this task and then you make a pull request from your feature branch to develop. And if your team is working in a continuous integration mindset, when you make this pull request, all of your tests should run over your changes. And again, it's like you made a very, very small change. You added a link to a navigation bar. So 
you probably just need to make sure that you have some type of accessibility checks that are running over this bar and maybe some tests that verify when you click the button, something happens. Okay, so you get that PR out there and then your other teammates are gonna come and review the PR, right? So I'll just go ahead and say like 2A, review PR and merge. And the idea is that your teammates need to be very proactive in like reviewing PRs, approving them, merging them. So this whole process of you adding a feature, you making a pull, pull request, your team reviewing it and it getting merged to develop, this should happen multiple times a day. Like we're talking maybe an hour max for that little feature. And then once that's merged in, you could then move on to the next PR. If you're doing pair or swarm programming, you don't have to wait for a review because you've been working with other developers. So technically you could just approve it yourself and merge it in and move on to the next task. Now the benefit of this is that let's say there's another team working on feature, I don't know, feature B. Their goal is every so often they should be pulling in the latest changes of develop into their own branch. And they should also be making pull requests for those small little tasks and features that they work on. So let me actually go ahead and label these so it's like explicit what I'm talking about here. So again, you would feature B, the team or the group of devs who are working on feature B would pull develop, pull origin develop into their own feature branch as often as possible. Whenever there's a change, you pull it in. And then they would also, at the same time, they would be making pull requests for their tasks, class sub features. Also over here, this team would be doing a pull origin develop too, to pull on the latest changes from this team. And again, the more people you have on a team, you're gonna have different features that are gonna be worked on in parallel. So the whole point of this concept again, is if you have a bigger team with a lot of developers and there's certain features that you're working on that have some type of overlap, you wanna find out as quick as possible if the design that you've done for your feature does not mesh well with the design for this other feature. Okay? And sometimes you don't know, like the bigger the team is, the less often you guys are gonna be talking about how to design different features. And you won't know until you guys start integrating your code together that, hey, maybe we need to rethink about this and regroup because what I'm working on here is basically changing the way that you need to do something here or vice versa. So that is basically my idea of continuous integration. I don't, I don't know if this is like the, the textbook definition of continuous integration, but again, it's just get your changes that you're working on merged with other developers as often as possible and also push your changes to some type of trunk, some centralized branch so that other developers can grab in those features and verify that when they grab those features, they're gonna work with their code. Now, ultimately, I would recommend doing some type of testing so that every time you make these pull requests, you have a suite of tests, linters, um, accessibility checks, integration tests, maybe some type of like end-to-end uh, -end Cypress test that run over your feature so that other developers won't be scared to pull in your changes, right? If they see that, hey, everything's green, this passed all tests, it got you know fully ran through Cypress and there's nothing that's broken, then yeah, let's just merge it in. Other teams can bring it in. The, the main issue with trunk-based development is that if someone breaks this branch, that means all of these other developers who are working on their features, the moment they pull in develop, their branch is gonna break too. And that's what we want to avoid. We do not wanna break trunk or where, whatever branch that all the developers are pulling in code as often as possible from, because if that breaks, You've basically now blocked all of these other developers from doing their job because there's a fundamental like break in the app right you've you've seen those before where you have like a simple syntax error and now the ui just won't load because it just crashes for some reason so that's why you want to have some type of continuous integration testing suites to verify that hey if i'm about to merge this teeny little pr that adds a link i don't potentially break the entire like flow for my entire team Again, this is kind of how we used to do work at our job. Uh, as our application has grown and gotten larger, we actually kind of moved away from this and we went to more of like a long running feature branch. I'm not a fan of it, but you know, sometimes your business and your client has to dictate the way that you do work. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the downsides that I've seen with continuous integration. A lot of people like to paint like a beautiful golden picture of these paradigms and they do have some issues with them, right? They do have some, some thought process that you have to address with how do you actually get these things deployed?
So as you have different team members working on their features, at some point you need to deploy to prod, right? You need to get your changes merged over to some type of main branch, or you can tag a release off a of develop and have that automatically kick off a deployment. It really depends on your team. But at some point, someone's going to say, I need to deploy. Now we're kind of getting into the, issue, the, the region of like continuous deployment, which I do not want to talk about in this video. But the issue with continuous integration that I've seen is that when someone says we need to get something deployed, right? We have to get feature B deployed. There might be feature C, D, and E that are not yet done that people have been pushing changes into develop. So it's not very easy to just say, I'm going to deploy develop to main now. Because when you do that, you're going to bring over a bunch of unfinished stuff that maybe you don't want your users ever seeing in the dashboard. Maybe you don't want users seeing this link yet because it's not done, which kind of gets into territory of something called feature flags. Okay, so feature flags is as you're working on this feature, certain things on your API and your UI would be hidden until you turn that flag on. So what this allows you to do is basically as these different developers are working on their features, you could potentially deploy develop at any point to main, but your users will not see the feature because it's behind a feature flag. But again, the feature flag thing is another paradigm that I think is like easier said than done because what if feature B involves a bunch of refactoring that touches your database, changes your database schema, um, and it's not, it's not done yet, right? Again, if the goal is to get your changes pushed into the develop as often as possible, you might make that change to your database schema you might write a migration script and you get that deployed over the develop. But what if we're not ready to run that migration when we kind of merge develop into main? Okay, so you can try to like wrap all your code in feature flags to, to make it like, so none of the code paths are kind of invoked when you make that database change. But unless you've structured your backend code to be very decoupled and like uh, prevent like database changes from polluting all the way up to the front end, it's a lot easier said than done. Um, so some things are actually like easier to not even do a feature flag. Like to give you some, some reference, there was like one feature that we're working on our code base. And we talked about, let's, let's put this behind a feature flag. And so we looked at the code base and we're like, dude, if we put this behind a feature flag, this is gonna involve basically putting flags and toggles behind like 50 different files. And obviously it's gonna take like weeks of work. So we decide, hey, we're not even gonna feature flag this. This will just be a long living feature branch. And when we want to deploy it, because there's actually like a time period that they had to deploy this feature, we said, you know what, we're not going to do continuous integration on this feature. We're just going to have it be a long lived feature branch because putting in the work to make this perfectly deployable, but with feature flags, is just not worth it. So I just wanted to kind of point that out there that a lot of these things that you read about, they're spoken as if like they're super easy to do. There's no flaws to them. They all have things that like when you get into the real real life scenarios and the real business use cases, they just start falling apart. So just don't think that you have to always work in a particular like box. In some cases, you have to get outside that box and go back to long live feature branches. In some cases, feature flags work perfectly fine. But yeah, that's all I really wanted to talk about. If you guys enjoyed watching me talk about this little continuous integration stuff, um, and call me out if there's anything that I said that was probably incorrect. Again, a lot of these terminologies, like I don't feel like people actually have a good understanding and every team kind of con considers themselves doing continuous integration in a different way. But just to drive the point home, continuous integration is just getting all of your development changes merged and integrated multiple times a day as often as possible. So you can quickly fix bugs if they were to occur from integrating together. I have a Discord channel if you want to join to find a place to talk to other developers or just get help. And uh, like always, press that bell icon, subscribe, leave a comment, and leave a like. Uh, have a good day, and happy coding.